Just a quick look at Thomas Edison's factory in West Orange, New Jersey. It's a national historic site. Nice gift shop. Got a couple of books. So basically the lay of the land, but a lot to explore. This sign here just tells a little bit about the complex of buildings here in West Orange. This is a, the first lab building that was built. Built in 1887, designed by Henry Hudson Holly, who also designed his home that I'm gonna go take a look at. And then this was one of the concrete factories of which there were several. And this is the last one standing. I think it's been converted into lofts. So, and he employed 10,000 people here in West Orange. Amazing. Thomas Edison. And I just thought this was a cool slogan for a town where the future began. On Main Street in West Orange, New Jersey. So they give you a park pass uh, to go into this gated community. There's a little uh, gatehouse with a gate. But as long as you have one of those things that they give you at the visitor center, you can drive into this neighborhood of beautiful homes and go up to where Thomas Edison lived. It just shows you the beauty of the uh, natural New Jersey topography. So it's heavily wooded. And we'll drive around. His, he and his wife are actually buried on the site of their home. I saw something to the effect of it's not open currently. Glenmont, Edison's Glenmont, I think that might be his house over there. Beautiful. So he could walk to work. It's right up the hill from his laboratories. Just looking at some of the other houses here. So I guess they're gonna take us in a loop. Beautiful grounds, look at this house. What a house, he deserved a house like that. Anybody who invented and employed as many people as he did. And by the way, I was reading quickly that he's mostly self-educated. He hardly had any formal schooling. So what does that say about our educational system? I mean, you have Abraham Lincoln was the same way. You've had famous college dropouts like Bill Gates and I think Mark Zuckerberg. So let's go in here. They might have a little parking area. It's kind of quaint and funny to see some of the National Park Rangers here usually associate people wearing the, those outfits at regular national parks. I wonder what that building is. Anyway, uh, we'll take a closer look when we get up here. Closer, here's the house. We'll park and walk around. So here's just a map of uh, the overall estate area. I forget how many acres they have here, but I'd guess around 20, maybe 30 acres. So there's a building that's converted into a visitor center. I don't know whether this used to, it's obviously a greenhouse, but maybe it was used for something else too. And then there's the house through here to go see what that sign says over there. So, let's see. I'll summarize this for you. Hold on. 
So this park and residential development, Victorian style, it's called Llewellyn Park, where uh, Edison's mansion is. And it was designed by Alexander Jackson Davis, who you hear his name a lot, associated with uh, Hudson River architecture and planning. What a great name. All right, let's walk around and read the next sign here. Here's Thomas Edison reading a book on his lawn. He bought this house in 1886 as a gift for his bride. I think I'll have to read more about the history. This was his second wife. And there's their family. Glenmont is 13 and a half acres. And he lived here for 44 years. And here's a map of the overall estate on Parkway. Pretty close to uh, Main Street in West Orange in Llewellyn Park. Now there's different ways to approach the house, so let's choose one. And when I video this from the other side of the building, I think the colors will pop more. It's a beautiful burnt orange color to the house. Let me take it from a better angle from the lighting. Just shows you more of the surrounding homes of equal stature. I like the balconies up there. I wonder if they use them. I would. I lived here. But beautiful grounds. Some other people here. I don't know if that, like, Japanese or Chinese garden. Wait a minute, maybe this is where he's buried. Let's see. Yes, he's buried right here. Thomas Alva Edison, 1847 to 1931, and his wife, who was 18 years younger, born in 1865, lived till 1947. Mina Miller Edison. Kind of reminds me of Elvis Presley's Graceland, where he's buried right on the grounds of his estate or house in Memphis. And of FDR and Eleanor Roosevelt who are buried on their estate in Hyde Park, New York. So, I just keep panning around because I want to but my eye keeps coming back to this house. What a beautiful house. And see from this side, from the southern side, the colors are really popping because the sun is pretty much behind us. It's around noon on a Saturday. Day before Easter. April and the wind is picking up and I didn't bring my wind slayer so hopefully it's not affecting the sound quality too much. Nice urn. Another grand uh, portico. Well, if you love Victorian architecture, and I do, and you gotta love this house. It has a port cocher where you can drive up. People get out of their cars. Maybe buggies back in the day. If it's raining, protected from the elements. 
What a beautiful uh, room here. This is on this end. It's like a grand dining room. I just love the color. Why don't I paint our house this color? This pops. Glenmont in West Orange, New Jersey. Thomas Edison's house for the second half of his life and he lived until he was in his mid 80s. He is closed. I was kind of not expecting it to be open or wasn't planning on going inside. Home of Thomas Alva Edison from 1886 to 1931 when he passed away. Let's see if we can look in without too much reflection. This is just a little alcove. There are another set of doors in there, so you can't see them, but let's see if we can see them. Oh, it's chained off. I wanted to look in that uh, fantastic looking room with the uh, semicircular end to it. So like any older house, it requires upkeep but it's in great shape. Glenmont. I don't know if you can see very well here. It looks like it's just being, this room, unfortunately, just being used to store things. Maybe from the era. Oh, it's a great room. This way so we can look back at the house. They've already mowed the grass for the first time here. And it's only mid-April. How's that? If I lived in this house, I would go on every balcony as much as possible. Beautiful house. Designed by the same architect, that was his name, Henry Hudson Holly, who designed the first big brick laboratory on the industrial campus. Beautiful. Beautiful tree. I don't know if this is a copper beach, but the huge low hanging branches I'm sure little kids would like to play on. I know my daughter used to play on such a tree when she was little. And then this is part of the complex and I forget what it's for, what it was built for. It's like a little jewel box. Still a good sized building. Maybe this was the garage. And where we started was over there, the greenhouse complex. It almost looks like a police precinct house. All right, we'll see what it is here. Well, you can't go in, but it looks like his old cars. Pretty cool. It is the former garage. Let me see, go around the other side, see if I can get less of a reflection. I think I read when I was looking at one of the other signs that this was built in the early 1900s. So let me walk down to this far window where I can reach up and look in. Let me see if I can reach up here. If I tall enough and we'll all look at this later I can't see what I'm looking at here but I hope it's a good shot of the cars that are stored in here here's an angle with not too bad a reflection and I guess when you're Thomas Alva Edison you have a chauffeur who drives you 
built in 1908. This is actually another one of his experiments. And I guess that's, yeah, that's him and his wife in a Detroit Electric Victoria Roadster about 1920. Note that Mina is at the steering control. That's a steering wheel back in the day, huh? Well, she was 18 years younger, so yeah, let the younger wife drive the garage. So I'm reading this sign, it talks about him having electric cars run on batteries that he invented. And one of the cars was a Model T Ford, given to him by his friend, Henry Ford. All right. Go back to the car and take one last drive around the house. This picture shows the house in 1947, the year Mina Edison passed away. And that's what it looks like today. And behind those hemlock trees is a barn where they had horses and goats and chickens. Far away from the house, which is back there. And this is like the remnants of an arbor. leading to the greenhouse. Everybody should have a greenhouse, right? They would mostly grow flowers here to have year round. It wasn't for vegetables. And these were the gardener's living quarters on the second floor. This plaque talks about Mina Miller Edison and she worked with Eleanor Roosevelt. They were involved in public recreation and beautification. And so this house was put on the New Jersey Women's Heritage Trail, which highlights a collection of historic sites located around the state that represent the significant contributions women made to the history of New Jersey. It's pretty cool. So there is a visitor center, but it's closed right now. All right, I think we've done the 360 here at Glenmont. Do one more drive-by on our way out. Get back onto the road that goes by the house. Take one last look at the neighborhood. I highly recommend coming here. It's well worth the visit. Also, there's not a lot of cars and traffic here. It's nice to get away from all that. See if we get a view here without the bushes in the way. Glenmont in West Orange, New Jersey.